Bridgerton, Hero Phase. I don't really want to change any of my stances, I don't think. This one says I can prove that using that will attack power against that monster after it attacks. So I've got two choices. I can either um, do nothing at all, don't move, don't attack, and close this fissure. Or I can deal with this hunting drake. Um, now, as it goes, the hunting drake has only one HP, and Bruna here has a special um, ability that says headbutt. At the end of your hero phase, you can take one damage and deal one damage to an adjacent monster. So I could headbutt that hunting drake and close the fissure. But you know what? With my shield, that hunting drake just looks like a nuisance more than anything else. So I'm going to Thing, just um, close that fissure. Ooh. As I scan down there, you may remember Bruno's poison. So Bruno's going to take um, one point of damage anyway. So let's um, remove two HP from this fissure tile. Now we're going to take these collapsed, they're called collapsed tunnel markers. Yeah, these collapsed tunnel markers will mark this fissure as closed. Here. Um, so, two damage. Great job. And now, at the end of my hero phase, uh, Bruna is going to roll the dice to get rid of this poison. If you roll a pl 10 or plus at the end of your hero phase, let's roll the dice. That's an 8. Unlucky. Now, maybe this is the time to use this Scrimshaw charm. It says flip after you, so I'm going to do that. I've got a 50 50 chance. So I'm going to flip this Scrimshaw charm. This carved piece of bone from a knucklehead trout grants its owner good luck. So let's try and uh, Reroll this poison. Okay. An 11. And uh, it did. Did the job. That's an 11, so the poison is removed. Okay. Exploration phase. Beginning of. Let's roll for another monster. If we're lucky, we'll get a 16 to 20. Well, not, it's a 7. So, let's down here, this fissure tile here. So we're going to get another monster, a goblin champion. That's a, that's a pretty nasty one. It's worth three experience. So Bruno takes this guy, we're going to get his figure, and we're going to place it on this tile here. Um, and now an encounter. We have the Cave Fisher's Lair event. It says, A cave fisher snags you with a sticky web. Draw a tile from the bottom and place it next to the, uh, the unexplored edges closer. There are no unexplored edges. So does this do nothing or do I draw another encounter? I should just follow the, um, follow the card. Nothing happens. We got away with it. I'll cut some slack. Maybe that's compensation for the fact that we're drawing an encounter every turn here. Villain. Uh, da, 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 activate the monsters. So this is going to be the Goblin Champion. 
if the goblin champion is adjacent to a hero? No. If the goblin champion is within two tiles of a hero? Yes. Ouch. It moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a vicious axe. Well, I think now is the time. <coughs> To use this mask of disguise. Your hero does not count as the closest hero to the monster. Hmm. Can I use this? It says if the goblin tile champion is within two tiles of the hero, which it is. And is adjacent to the closest hero. Well, I'm going to say that this Mask of Disguise basically says This enchanted mask allows the wearer to look like anyone. Interesting. Because if I follow this strictly by the letter, it says Yes, I've got a hero that's within two tiles, but it's not the closest hero. That would make this Goblin Champion move all the way around. Here, so I'm going to use this Mask of Disguise that means <coughs> the Goblin Champion does not recognise this category as being within two tiles, so that's what I'm going to do. And that means we move to the Otherwise section. The Goblin Champion moves one tile towards the closest hero. I can't see that the intention is anything else really because the idea really is the goblin can only move two tiles right okay that's that's got to be the it's got to be it, it flip this card over when when used <laughs> so the goblin champion is going to move from here to here move on to Caterpillar's turn <coughs> so Hero phase, well, we know what she's going to do. She's going to use her Heart Seeker stance again. I'm going to put this minus 4 AC on the Goblin Champion. And we're going to try and get plus, t plus 1 damage. The Goblin's uh, HP, Champion's HP 2. So um, class 16, so with our <coughs> um, tall Maril enchanted bow, we have plus 6. Let's roll the dice. 16 plus 6 is 22. Arm class 12, 2 damage. <laughs> Take that. My goblin champion is out of here. Two more, three more experience. That's pretty cool because now we can cancel an event card if we wish. Goodbye, goblin. Okay, um, we can't attack again. And we don't want to move again because we're quite, doing quite well there. Um, So we move to the exploration phase and roll the dice. That is a six. Which means another monster here. Ooh. I'm going to take, I forgot, I'm going to draw a monster but I need to take a treasure, treasure. A potion of healing. Well, I'm going to give this to Bruno. He's going to be the one in the thick of it. Oh, he's got more HP. And keep Caterbury at, at a distance. Right, so monster. What was I doing, monster? Another water elemental. Right here. <coughs> um, encounter phase. Cunning disguise. 
you are revealed as a monster in disguise. Oh. Place a new monster on your hero's tile. Then place your hero on any square at the start tile. Well, I'm on the start tile. Do I want to cancel this? There will be three monsters out there. It's not the worst. But I just kind of muck my plan up a bit to have a monster appearing on the start tile. What to do, what to do. Could be a bad guy as well. Do you know what? I'm going to use what you've got while you've got it. I'm going to use my experience to turn those two over to cancel this guy. Okie dokie. Uh, that was the encounter phase, that was the start of the villain phase, uh, activate monsters, which is going to be our water elemental, and our hunting drake, so hunting drake first, if the hunting drake is with one tile, it attacks, moves adjacent and attacks with a rending bite. Plus eight, armor class eighteen for Bruno. Remember, so we're up here. Let's roll the dice. That's a fourteen plus eight. That's twenty-two. That's a hit. So Bruno's going to take a nasty nip on the ankle. <laughs> And uh, he has two points of damage. Now the water elemental is going to activate. And <coughs> it says if the water elemental is adjacent to a hero, no. Um, if the water elemental is within one tile of a hero, no. Otherwise the water elemental moves one tile towards the closest hero, within range of my bow again. Okay, job done. When we come back, uh, Bruna is going to take care of that uh, hunting drake and possibly move down here and sort this guy out. 